Hi Art Nerds! So today we are taking a look at these Boko Undo Gansai watercolors. They are Japanese colors and they are inspired by the colors traditionally used in Sumie painting. So if you're interested in seeing how these perform, keep watching! So, this nondescript little box is sealed with two pieces of tape. I'm going to use a knife to just kind of carefully slit those so we can take a look at what's inside. And they're actually quite lovely and I think they're very different from any of the other uh, sort of Gensai style watercolors that I own and they remind me a lot of Platinum's um, their Iron Gall ink line. These colors are very similar to the colors available in the Platinum Iron Gall ink line. So for those of you who are not familiar with Gansai style watercolors, there are several companies that make them. Kuratake, Akashia, Kisho, and Boko Undo. And a while back, I reviewed a couple of Boko Undo's uh, Sume style brushes or Mento style brushes. So I really like the packaging for this. It's quite classy. And I am eager to swatch these for you guys. So I have assembled the tools of my swatching trade. We're going to be swatching on Half Ripe Sean paper. This is typically used for Chinese watercolor, but I thought it would be really good to do some swatch tests here. I'm using a pigment brush pen to lay down some lines so we can also test out opacity. And I have here a Yasutomo Sumi brush, as well as our Boko Undo Gansai watercolors. Reddish black is a beautiful dark cherry color. Yellowish black seems to be slightly opaque, a bit like a warbler's green. Greenish black is sort of an evergreen blue black sort of color. Bluish black is, I would almost say it's like Holbein neutral tint in terms of color. So it's a really versatile sort of shadow color. Ooh, purplish black is almost more black than purple and it's kind of a grape color. And then finally, and this might be slightly off camera for you guys, I can't move it because my paper has stuck, but brownish black is like a nice sepia color. So this could really be a good addition to your existing Kuratake Gansai Tambi set perhaps, because these are nice darker colors that aren't already in, I think it's not even in the largest of the Gansai Tambi sets. I don't think they have any colors like these. Now these are made by Boko Undo, so it's not the same company. I'm just suggesting if you are like me and you happen to like darker, more subdued colors, these could be a really nice pick good solution for what you're looking for. Next, after this dries, I'm going to swatch these on um, Western watercolor paper. But first, I do want to play a little bit with them since I have some paper here on the side, just kind of blending them together. And I know I hold my brush just all wrong. And that's something I need to practice, I need to get better at how I handle my brush. It's going to be something I explore in the near future though. These seem to very readily activate and they seem to have really nice fluid movement on this particular paper. These are not yet dry. I am going to put them to the side. I am finding that with this type of paper though, it is really best if I just allow it to dry flat on the table. So if I'm doing something nicer, that's what I'm gonna do. And here I have a little snippet 
of Arches watercolor paper. This actually came in my watercolor snacks. And I am going to do some lines across the paper so we can test opacity. I'm gonna give that just a moment to dry. I'm gonna try, this is a big brush, so I'm gonna try to be light-handed, but I'm gonna do a mass tone opacity swatch and then a gradiated swatch on this cotton rag watercolor paper. And it was really my watercolor snacks summer unboxing slash demonstration videos where I use the Kuretake Gen Saitambi on a nicer Western paper that made me realize that um, actually I could see myself using Gen Saitambi on papers other than washi and rice paper. I had tried it on cellulose paper and I was really very disappointed. So I'm trying to make it a point to swatch my Eastern watercolors on Western papers in addition to Eastern papers and high quality Western papers at that, not just inexpensive cellulose papers. Cause I feel like, I feel like the cotton rag holds on to the color and holds on to the animal glue binder a lot better than the cellulose papers do. So I think I'm going to have fewer problems if I'm painting on a nice cotton rag paper. And I know cellulose paper does have, you know, its own unique quirks and flaws. I do paint on it as well as on cotton rag paper regularly. So I'm familiar with both. I don't know why I was being so cheap, I guess. But I feel like cellulose paper really can't hold on to these types of paints the way a cotton rag paper can. There's really, I really love shadow colors and this is a beautiful shadow color set that might be less expensive than um, tubes of shadow watercolor and you do get a fair amount of color in this set as well. And this set on Amazon was $14.90 for six colors, six beautiful colors. They also have the Aurora set, which looks like it's uh, pearlescent. They also have a metallic set that has three um, fluorescents as well as metallics. And they also have a traditional watercolor set for $21.56, which has red, silver, copper, gold, white, and black. So, you know, if you like what you see here, that definitely might be something worth considering. It might be something worth looking at, especially if you're looking to augment the very popular Kuretake Gensai Tambi set that it sets that are very easily available here in the US. So we've got everything swatched. These are some beautiful, beautiful colors. Nice shadow colors could be very useful as neutral tints could be very useful as underglazes, depending on the paper you like to work on. I can't say much about how it performs on the Sean paper, mostly because I just don't have enough experience with that kind of paper, but I know some of you do. So hopefully this information here is helpful for you guys. For those of you who, like me, primarily do Western style watercolors, though, these are a phenomenal addition to your existing, if you so have one, Gen size sets. But they're also quite useful just with your regular Western watercolors, I would think. So I hope this was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. I hope I turned you on to something that maybe you hadn't discovered yet. Check the description below for a link for where you can get your own set if this seems like something you would enjoy. And keep an eye on this channel for more watercolor tips, tricks, and tutorials, especially as we're entering World Watercolor Month. If you're looking for something a little more in depth, head on over to natasoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basics series. I'll see you guys again really soon with another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.